I have this simple app built in Remix. It's a basic character slash party builder for a dungeon crawler board game called Gloomhaven. It's pretty bare bones at the moment, but all the data manipulation features are in place. Right now, it can actually work completely without JavaScript. That's a really nice thing about Remix, is it encourages you to do things at a first principles level and use the browser as it's intended to be used. So if we go into the root.tsx file, I can actually comment out the scripts tag, save that, and we'll get a full page refresh over here. And now we can go ahead and try and create a new party, for instance. We'll see that we're getting these full page refreshes every time we're clicking that, which means we're not doing client-side routing, which would require JavaScript. All right, I'll create my party. I should probably add the Y at the end and hit submit. And we'll see another full page refresh as we're submitting the data to the database. It takes a little bit longer on dev than it would on a production build. So just bear that in mind as you're seeing these load weights. Perfect, everything worked without JavaScript. We can also delete this new party and it'll again do a full page refresh and work without JavaScript, which is really great. Now, a lot of people actually do have JavaScript enabled and JavaScript really can allow us to build much faster and better websites if we're using it correctly. So we would like to use JavaScript to make this a little bit better without breaking how it would work for someone who doesn't have JavaScript enabled on their device. So we're gonna uncomment that scripts tag. We're gonna go ahead and go into the party slash new page. We're gonna start progressively enhancing this. So over here, I'll go back to that page that I need. And there we can see we had a client side routing. So we know that the, the scripts are back in, which is good. So here you can see that we're using a regular HTML form lowercase f. This works automatically with the browser. We don't actually need anything fancy. We're not doing any client-side fetching. If we want to enhance this, Remix gives us a really nice way to do that. It's called the capital F form component, and we'll just swap this out. So immediately, if we go ahead and create a new party, let's let that reload, and we hit submit, we can see that that loading indicator isn't there. And it went ahead and actually created that party into the client-side fetch. Now, we, at this point, we've actually made things worse. There was really not a good indication to the user that anything was happening. They may end up wanting to hit that submit button like 15 times and then recreate the party every single time. So that is not a good experience, user experience. Um, and so if this were all that we were doing, we actually made things worse and should probably go backwards. But there's some really cool stuff that we can do to make things better. So the first is to import another thing from Remix called use pending form submit. Kind of a long hook name, but no worries. And we're going to say let pending oops, form equals, we're going to call that use pending form hook. This pending form is either going to be undefined or it's going to give us some the, the data basically from the form submit that we just did. So what we're going to do is we're first going to say let disabled equal, and we're going to do the double bang pending form, which just turns this into a Boolean. So if it's disabled, we do want to go ahead and disable the button that we have which will give us some nice um, CSS and, and some other things. They want to be able to hit submit again as well. And then the other thing we want to do is we actually want to tell the user that we're currently submitting so that they know. So we're going to say submitting with some ellipses. Let's see if that all worked. Oop, need a full page refresh there. And then submit, submitting, and we have this little, you know, CSS uh, is making our, our cursor have a little loading indicator, which is great. Cool, so things are a lot better. Um, but one other little thing that we can do that's really cool is we can say, if it's disabled, we wanna actually change this into a string literal. That way we can add some kind of specifics to what we're submitting. So let's go ahead and say, pending form dot data, and then dot get. And here we can get any uh, data from the form itself. So we can see that we have a name of name. So we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get that and say, the name, so we're gonna say submitting. But rather, let's make this a little bit more specific. We're gonna just say creating Ada's Guild, and when we hit submit, it'll say creating Ada's Guild, which is great. We have a nice, better user experience. This actually will be a little bit faster in the deployed version because it's doing client-side fetching and creating of that uh, versus using the browser, which is a little bit faster. So cool, we've progressively enhanced one page and we haven't actually lost any of the JavaScript because the, the, the fallback for this form will be to use the browser's regular fetching uh, using the form actions. All right, let's update a little bit more of a complicated page, which is this page where we can actually edit location, notes, achievements, reputation, add some characters, all these sorts of things. To do this, we're going to need to go to the party slash dollar sign ID, and this is just a dynamic uh, route, basically, and that's this CKPWN. Um, those are the IDs for the specific party that we're on. So here, if we do a quick search, we can see that we actually have four forms that we're going to have to change out. 
And the first one I want to do, actually, I want to start with the delete. So how do we want to tackle this? Well, the thing with form, you can see that the method is actually a post, and we probably would want to use the HTML verb delete, right? The reality is, though, forms don't actually accept this delete method. They only accept a git or a post. Um, so if we're going to do this delete, we're going to have to add it ourselves. Now, if we enhance this to the form that comes from Remix, so let's go ahead and add that in. We can actually see that the delete will work, which is nice, but we're breaking the kind of backwards compatibility of this, or rather the JavaScript uh, list version of this, because that form won't really know what this delete is, and we really need to know what that delete is. Here, you can see that we're actually making up for this by adding an input uh, that its type is hidden, so this won't be visible to the user. Uh, and then we have a name of underscore method and give that a value of delete, which is really cool. So it'd be nice if I didn't have to remember to do this every time. So I'm going to do one thing, which uh, I don't know, the Remix team may not necessarily like this or think it's a good idea, but I found it to work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my components, and I'm actually going to create my own little form on top of the form that they have. So in order to do this, I'm going to import the form as Remix form from Remix. And I know I'm going to need a couple types, so I'm just going to add these. The types that we are going to need is the form props, because we do just want to build this on top of this. And we're also going to need the request. And I'll get to why we're going to need that later. So we're going to export a function called form. And it's going to take some things off of those form props. We're going to need the children. We're going to need the method. And we'll just get all the rest of the props. Cool. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little variable in here called not allowed method. And we're going to say if the method doesn't equal a get request and the method doesn't equal a post request, then we know that the method is technically not an allowed method, at least not for HTML. And so what we're going to do is we're going to return our remix form. Pretty simple. We're going to want to go ahead and spread those props. And we're going to want the method to be, well, if it's not allowed, we're going to want to make it a post by default. But if it is allowed, we're going to do just the method that was passed. All right, let's create the rest of the tags. We're going to want to pass along the children in here, because we need those to render. And the other thing we want to do is we actually want to take that little input, the hidden input that I had, and add it in by default. But we're not going to add it every single time. We're going to actually do a similar thing. We're going to say not allowed method. Um, if it is allowed method, we're going to return null. But if it's not allowed method, we want to return this input. And the name will always be underscore method to keep things simple. But the value should be whatever the method that was passed in is. Let's go ahead and add a little comment here just so that people know what in the world is going on if they ever come and see this. Great. Now we've progressively enhanced this, which is really great. Looks like it tripped on the other side, but we'll fix that in a second. The last thing that we want is we want to be able to pull out this method really easily. So we're going to create a little helper here. And we're going to call it uh, export function get method. Function. And then we're going to have a body of URL search params, which we'll pass in later, and a request of that request that we pulled out. This needs to come from remix, not node. And then we're going to return body.get underscore method. So if the underscore method exists, we're going to use that one. But by default, we're going to go uh, use the request.method that comes in. And let's just make this to lowercase, just to make things easy on ourselves in case for some reason pa someone passed a uppercase one. We're going to make everything lowercase in, um, in our app. Cool. So these are good. The uh, only thing we need to do is we just need to export all these from form so we can import them correctly. And so back at ID, we're going to not import the form from Remix, but we're going to import it here. And we are going to want to do that git method. Perfect. I think we can close this, and we can close that sidebar, give ourselves some more room. So let's go to that form that we were using. Down, not that one, but up here. All right, that means that we can get rid of this, which is really, really great. And this delete should now work exactly how we want it to. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is all running right. We're going to restart this. We're going to give this a refresh. OK, so let's see if this is working correctly. All right, looks like we don't have any pending indicator, which we knew was going to happen. But it does seem to have deleted correctly. Of course, there's a little bit of a delay because we're in the dev mode. Um, the other thing I forgot to change, I forgot to implement that method, the git method. Uh, but that's pretty simple because I actually was using it here. 
So I just want to replace it here. And we're going to pass in that body, which is the URL search frames, and the request. So that will, we will get the method here. So, so far, we've actually just made this strictly worse. We now don't have a pending indicator if we are deleting the party. Um, so that's, that's really not a good thing. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and use our form, use pending form submit. And we're going to do the same thing of let pending form equals use pending form submit. Uh, and then we're also going to say disabled equals double bang pending form. Because basically, if anything is disabled, we, uh, or rather, sorry, if anything is pending, if any form is submitted, we want to disable everything. Currently, uh, Remix doesn't allow you to have multiple pending forms on the same page. This is something they're working on, and I'm really excited about it. I'll, I'll definitely show it off once they've uh, implemented it. Um, but at the moment, we just need to disable everything because we don't want to be updating the party and then also able to delete it at the same time. Um, that's just going to be really confusing and, and not a really good user experience. So we'll just go ahead and disable everything. Uh, we also want to add that nice little you know, extra enhancement of telling them what they're deleting, uh, letting them know what's going on beyond just telling them this is disabled. Um, so what do we want to add here? So we want to say that uh, basically it's deleting the party, right? So we'll make these string templates. And we'll say deleting. And we have the party name actually up there. It came in as a prop, so we're going to do that, which is nice. And we could just say disabled, but that doesn't really make sense because if we're submitting, we don't want to be saying that we're deleting. Uh, so we need some way to tell if we're actually deleting the specific party, or rather if this is the specific form action that we're doing. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to add another input, and this will also be of type hidden. So this is nice because nothing will see it. It's just for our form. This is kind of like an implementation detail, basically. So we're going to say it's hidden, and then we're going to say name of delete party. And you can give it a value. Uh, I'll give it a value of the name. We're not really going to use that, but in other cases, this might be useful. So we're going to take this delete party, and we're not going to say disabled. We're going to say pending form, and then if it has the data, and if that data has delete party, then we're going to say that we're deleting. So let's go ahead and see if this works after this refreshes. Perfect. Deleting party. And it's saying party because that's the name of the party. Not a very good name for a party. But that's basically how it works, is really, which is really great. Uh, so we've made things all a little bit better, and we haven't sacrificed JavaScript yet. So I'm going to go ahead and update all the rest of this to use form. Uh, it's a bit tedious, so I'm not going to make you watch me uh, walk through all of that. All right. I went through and progressively updated all the forms that we had to use the capital F form, and we can go ahead and make sure everything's working. So we're going to create my new party, and we can see that that pending form is working, which is great. And now we're going to say the location where the dagger forest. Um, I don't know. We don't have any achievements, but maybe we have positive reputation. We can go ahead and submit this. We see that pending form is working. Everything is uh, disabled, which is great. We can go ahead and add a character once this is finished. And that will say, OK, we're adding Brian. That's exactly what we want to happen. And once we've added Brian, we can also remove him like this, removing Brian. And that works perfectly. And we'll also be able to delete this, but I don't want to do that quite yet. So everything's working great. But let's talk a little bit about the value of progressive enhancement. So first of all, we know that if someone isn't using JavaScript and we require JavaScript on this website, they just would not be able to use the website. And that could definitely be a big bummer. And a lot of my work that I do, we're kind of, we have a, a small number of clients so we can kind of control the environment a little bit that they're working in um, and guarantee that maybe they are using JavaScript. So for those cases, it may not feel like this progressive enhancement really helps, but I've actually come across a pretty, uh, you know, compelling use case for myself as to why you'd still want this. A lot of times we have people with pretty slow internet speeds. And since JavaScript usually loads after your page loads, I mean, it kind of has to, um, they might actually want to click a button or whatever and it doesn't work. So we're going to go ahead and go into the root.tsx file. We're not going to uh, delete the scripts. Actually, this isn't the right file. We're going to go into the entry.client. So one nice thing that Remix gives you is it allows you to kind of have the entry point of both your server and your client. So for the client, we can see we have react-dom.hydrate. This is where we're really actually adding all the JavaScript. When we call react-dom.hydrate, it goes through the entire tree that we have built, and it hydrates all of these uh, buttons and the forms and everything that we have to include all the JavaScript handlers and all the sorts of things that we wanted to uh, add. So what I can do is I can artificially slow this down. This is the easiest way for me to show this. So what we're going to do is set timeout. And inside that set timeout, you, of course, need the callback. And we're going to just slow it down for uh, maybe two seconds. And then we're going to say we're going to add a console log so that we know uh, when this goes. So we'll say uh, hydrate or dihydrate. There we go. So we'll know once this has actually happened, which is great. So let's go ahead and um, add some notes. 
and we'll submit this. And we can see it said hydrate or dehydrate uh, down here, which is good. And we can see that the JavaScript worked, which is exactly what we want. But let's say you come in here and you want to just act really fast. You're just, you know, you're, you're way faster than your internet speed is going, which has definitely happened with my clients before. So we're going to refresh this. And once it's refreshed, we'll see that comment goes away. That comment hasn't come in and I hit delete. Well, we still have the pending loading indicator. Hydrate or dihydrate did come in, but we've already submitted this form and we want that to still happen. So that to me is why you kind of want this progressive enhancement, even if you know that your user is going to have JavaScript, because you don't really know what the internet speed they're going to be on is. Uh, we also might be doing this on mobile, so maybe even slower. Um, so to me, that's a, that's kind of a really big reason why I wanted to add this. So anyway, as I go along, I'm going to keep working on this application. I'm going to make the styling a lot better and add a lot more features. And my goal is really just to show off what the Remix team is doing, what they're building. Um, and I'm just really excited for all the things that are coming uh, to Remix. So I hope you enjoyed this video. hope it gave you um, an interesting, compelling use case for some progressive enhancement with allowing uh, JavaScript and JavaScript lists websites to both kind of coexist together.